my day has been pretty good until I came in here and saw all of you. <laughs> Awesome. Jonah Hill is an actor, director, producer, and screenwriter. Working his way from a comedian to one of the most versatile talents in Hollywood, he wrote his name in the history of world cinema. In this video, you will learn about all the twists and turns of the professional and personal life of this actor. That's the coolest story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Can I hear it again? Jonah Hill, how the Hollywood's chief nerd lives and how much he earns. Get ready for a lifetime of being badass, mother. Oh, I am. Jonah Hill Feldstein was born on December 20, 1983, in Los Angeles, to a creative Jewish family. His father, Richard, was a tour manager for the band Guns N' Roses, and his mother, Sharon Lynn, was a costume designer and stylist. Jonah had an older brother, Jordan, who worked as a manager for the band Maroon 5, but he passed away unexpectedly in 2017. The star was left with a younger sister, Elizabeth, also known as Beanie, who followed her brother's example and took up an acting career. She became popular after the release of the movie Lady Bird, in which she played the friend of the main character. The girl's tale carries the surname Feldstein, while Jonah gave it up officially. As a child, Hill dreamed of playing a character in The Simpsons, and from the age of seven, he began to create scripts for episodes of the iconic animated series. His parents had no doubt that their son had a great future and supported him in all his endeavors. Having been wealthy people, they tried to give him the best things in life. He attended the Early Education Center, Brantwood School, and then went to Crossroads School in Santa Monica. After graduating in 2002, he went to the New School, a private university in New York City, to study drama. The star also studied at Bard College and the University of Colorado at Boulder, but did not receive a degree. The future star has always had problems with being overweight. He often felt fat and unattractive. The experiences of his adolescence left an imprint on his psyche, which later resulted in the creation of the movie Mid-90s. Hardly anyone knows, but at the age of 15, Jonah nearly lost his arm. He and a friend stole an SUV for a joyride. Hill was waving his arm out the open window until the car flipped over and his arm was dragged across the pavement. Doctors considered amputation, but luckily his arm was saved, and Hill made an oath not to bring his loved ones to tears again. Before succeeding in Hollywood, Hill wanted to be a rapper and moved to New York City to join the hip-hop industry. He had the opportunity to collaborate with a well-known artist like Q-Tip, but Jonah eventually shifted his focus to acting. Despite the change in career trajectory, Hill's love for music remained the same and influenced his professional life. During his college years, the aspiring actor took his first steps towards unleashing his comedic talent. He wrote jokes that he performed on stage at the New York bar Black and White in the East Village, which led him to become part of the stand-up comedy scene and to meet Judge Apatow, Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, and several others from the same circle. The young man's performances resonated with the children of Hollywood star Dustin Hoffman. They introduced their new friend to their father, who played a significant role in Hill's screen career. Hoffman recommended him for an audition in the philosophical comedy film I Heart Huckabees. In the 2004 film, where Dustin played one of the main characters, Jonah landed the modest role of Brett, for which he received $40,000. Supervisor hired Stephen as a member of our congregation. He was so skinny when he moved in here. Yeah, too oh bad for math. Forget that. What did we say about? Hey. After being noticed, the newcomer was invited to appear in an episode of the TV series NYPD Blue. In 2005, Hill made an appearance in Judd Apatow's directorial debut, the comedy film *The 40-Year-Old Virgin*. And later, in Jake Hoffman's short film, Poncho's Pizza. Jonah then starred in seven episodes of the sitcom Campus Ladies and in several comedy movies, Grandma's Boy, Accepted, Ten Items or Less, and Click. Look how big you got! You're enormous! Look who's talking, Captain Twinkie the SS fat ass! It's really good for my self-esteem. Maybe if you would take me like to Pilates like you said you would, people wouldn't think I was Rosie O'Donnell. 
The year 2007 proved to be even more fruitful for the celebrity. He starred in the dramedy Rocket Science, the rom-com Knocked Up, and the family film Evan Almighty. He appeared in the musical comedy Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story, without being mentioned in the credits before appearing as a guest star in one of the episodes of the series Clark and Michael. And he was also involved in an episode of the series Human Giant and the web series Tim and Eric Night Live. Jonah was also featured in two episodes of the series Wainy Days, but the highlight for him was his involvement in the comedy Superbad. His role as Seth yielded a fee of $350,000, as well as nominations for MTV Awards in the categories of Breakthrough of the Year and Best Comedy Role. I'm over here in my unit, isolated and alone, eating my terrible tasting food, and I gotta look over at that. Looks like the most fun I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's BS, excuse my language, I'm just saying that I wash and dry. I'm like a single mother. Jonah does not publicize the details of his personal life, but also does not hide his relationships with the opposite sex. It is known that in the late 2000s, Jordan Klein was the actor's girlfriend. The young couple were even preparing for a wedding but parted ways in 2011. Meanwhile, the actor made his first appearance on the popular TV show Saturday Night Live where he portrayed Adam Grossman, a six-year-old Jewish boy who displayed remarkable comedic talent. Around the same time, he also starred in comedic films such as Strange Wilderness, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and Just Add Water. Additionally, he provided the voice for a character in the animated film Horton Hears a Who. In 2009, the actor's filmography expanded with the black comedy drama Funny People, the comedy film The Invention of Lying, and the adventure film Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian. I've seen things that you could not imagine. Like what kind of stuff? You said it, it just sounded like you were gonna say something cool. Yeah, well, you don't get to hear it. Drop the flashlight. In addition to that, Hill served as a producer for the satirical film Bruno, made a cameo appearance in the TV series Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Great Job, had an uncredited role in the series Reno 911, and fulfilled his childhood dream by voicing Andy Hamilton in an episode of the animated series The Simpsons. In 2010, Jonah voiced characters in the animated films How to Train Your Dragon, Legend of the Bone Napper Dragon, and Megamind, as well as the video game adaptation of the same name. Additionally, he played the lead role in the romantic comedy Cyrus and portrayed a young music manager in the comedy film Get Him to the Greek as a tribute to his father. Nothing you say makes any sense, okay? I understand that now. You're just a junkie. And you're smart, so you make your insanity sound good, but it's bullshit. This is it, Aaron. The following year, Hill directed a music video based on his own screenplay for the song Gonna Get Over You by American singer Sarah Bareilles. He also played the lead role in the comedy film The Sitter, voiced a character in the animated film DreamWorks Dragon's Gift of the Night Fury, and was the key character in the animated series Alan Gregory, which aired on Fox. Hill was one of the creators of the project, which received negative reviews and was cancelled in January 2012. The main development, however, was the premiere of the movie Moneyball. In this movie, Jonah Hill showcased his dramatic talent for the first time. Although the lead role in the sports film was played by Brad Pitt, Hill did not get lost in his shadow. His involvement in the film earned the star a fee of $2 million, as well as nominations for the Oscar, Golden Globe, BAFTA, and Screen Actors Guild Award. I asked you to do three. Yeah. To evaluate three players. Yeah. How many did you do? 47. Okay. Actually, 51. I don't know why I lied just then. In July 2011, the actor lost 40 pounds, stating that he achieved weight loss through a comprehensive approach of exercise and dietary adjustments. Jonah admitted that he shed the extra weight in order to have better chances of getting more serious roles. It is worth noting that Hill is very self-conscious about his weight and does not like being asked about it in interviews. He appeared in his new persona in November of the same year when he starred alongside Sam Worthington and Dwight Howard in a commercial for the video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. In 2012, the action comedy film 21 Jump Street was released where Jonah Hill played the role of Morton Schmidt. He also served as a screenwriter and executive producer for the film, earning a fee of $3.5 million. He was nominated for several MTV Movie Awards for his involvement in the film. It was Hill who convinced Channing Tatum to star in the movie, despite Tatum initially rejecting the offer twice. Cut the bullshit. I want to know who's the supplier. 
We don't know. That's why there's a question mark on his face. That's not the way his face looks. That's just a question mark. In June, the actor was invited to join the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. He then appeared in the sci-fi comedy The Watch and Quentin Tarantino's film Django Unchained. I didn't say no bags. But nobody can see. So? So it'd be nice to see. God damn it! This is a raid! I can't see, you can't see. So what? Meanwhile, information about the celebrity's personal life leaked to the media. It was reported that Hill was dating Alexandra, the daughter of Dustin Hoffman. However, their relationship ended in September, after which rumors surfaced about brief flings between Jonah and actress and Haim band member Alana Haim, as well as singer Rita Ora. In 2013, audiences enjoyed the actor's performance in Martin Scorsese's film The Wolf of Wall Street. Hill played the role of the financial partner of the main character, portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio. It is known that Jonah agreed to participate in this project for a modest fee of $60,000, while DiCaprio received $25 million. However, according to Hill, being part of a project by the iconic director was a joy for him, and he stated that he could have even worked for free. During the filming, the actor was hospitalized with bronchitis because he had to sniff a lot of vitamin D which was used as a substitute for the prohibited white powder. Eventually, his role in this film did not go unnoticed, and Jonah received the MTV Movie Award as well as his second nomination for an Oscar. The sides? Uh, sides? Yeah. sides? $26,000 yeah. worth of sides? <laughs> what are these sides? They cure cancer? The sides did cure cancer. That's the problem. They were there. That's why they were expensive. <laughs> Shut the f up. I'm serious. I know. Stop. In the same year, the star delighted fans with his appearance in the comedy film This Is The End, where global superstars such as Rihanna, James Franco, Emma Watson, and others appeared as themselves. No! no don't, don't do that! Jesus! Jonah. I know! Jonah, I gotta end it! Don't do that! Jonah! I'm stop! Oh. Oh. In 2014, Jonah provided the voice for Green Lantern in the computer animated film The Lego Movie. He also participated in the voice cast for the sequel to How to Train Your Dragon and reprised his role as Morton Schmidt in the second installment of the action comedy film 22 Jump Street, for which he received a payment of $5 million and was nominated for three MTV Movie Awards. Dude, I miss you so much, man. I miss you too. You're like a tiny little flower seed. And I, was, I was clenching you in my fist. In the same year, Hill began dating actress Isabel McNally. They kept their relationship private, but persistent paparazzi constantly captured photos of the couple together. However, their romance lasted less than a year. Afterward, Hill was in a relationship with nutritionist Brooke Glazer, but they dated for only a few months. Meanwhile, while playing a reporter for the New York Times in the 2015 thriller True Story, Jonah proved to both the directing team and himself that he is not only a talented comedian, but also a serious dramatic actor. You hire people like me to get on the ground and hunt. That's how this paper has competitive advantage. I did the best with what I had. You lied. By the way, the scene in which Hill's character punches the wall was completely improvised and resulted in a severe bruise. In that same year, Jonah Hill ranked 28th on Forbes' list of the highest paid actors with a net worth of $16 million. The next film featuring our star was the comedy Hail Caesar, directed by the Coen brothers. In the film, he portrays a lawyer who is tasked with finding a missing actor from the set. He then appeared in Todd Phillips' film War Dogs, and his role in that film earned Hill a nomination for a Golden Globe. Come on! Where's everybody going? Thought we were going to hang out! Additionally, he provided the voice for a character named Carl, a sausage, in the adult animated film Sausage Party, and he served as a co-writer for the comedy film Why Him? In 2017, Hill primarily focused on voice acting. Specifically, he once again lent his voice to Green Lantern, this time in the animated spin-off of the Lego movie called The Lego Batman Movie. He also voiced a character in the animated series Animals. In the same year, he appeared in the music video for rapper Danny Brown's song Ain't It Funny, 
By that time, Hill had a new partner, Aaron Galpern, with whom he had been in a relationship for a year. 2018 was memorable for Hill's directorial debut in feature-length films. He presented his self-directed film Mid-90s, which was dedicated to his late brother. The film's main character is a teenager named Stevie who, while trying to escape his problems, joins a group of skateboarders. This theme has fascinated the actor since childhood, and he even worked at the skateboard shop Hot Rod. Additionally, Jonah, or rather his head, appeared in an advertisement for the skateboard brand Palace to celebrate the opening of their first store in Tokyo. He had previously appeared in a promotional video for the collaboration between Palace and Reebok. Hill also appeared in the sci-fi series Maniac, where he also served as an executive producer for the project. He voiced a character in an episode of the series The Shivering Truth. In the same year, the biographical film Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot was released, starring Joaquin Phoenix in the lead role. In the film, Hill is hardly recognizable as the therapist Donnie, who leads group sessions in a luxurious mansion. No. Every day, like clockwork, at 4 p.m., I get massively depressed. Well, I'm depressed from the moment I wake up, so got you there. <laughs> In August, the star was spotted with a new girlfriend, Gianna Santos. A year later, the couple announced their engagement. Meanwhile, in one of his interviews, Jonah expressed his frustration with Hollywood's pressure to meet fitness standards. He also shared that he has come to accept his body with the help of his sister. Hill's openness and honesty about his personal struggles have earned admiration from his fans and many colleagues. The actor is so well-loved that there is even a Jonah Hill Day celebrated in Brooklyn. In that same year, 2018, Jonah got a tattoo on his forearm dedicated to his younger sister with the inscription Hello Beanie. He got it after she landed a role in the musical Hello Dolly. Additionally, Hill has other tattoos. For example, a giant pirate ship, a wolf, a panther, a skull, a dagger, and a classic spider web on his elbow. His first tattoo with the inscription Nancy Rules is located on his left forearm. He got it in honor of his grandmother, who once told him to ask for a different role in The Wolf of Wall Street because she didn't like the one he played. In 2019, Hill portrayed the character of Lewis, a literary agent in the comedy film The Beach Bum. He also directed the music video for American rapper Travis Scott's hit song Wake Up. Additionally, he voiced characters in the animated films How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, and The Lego Movie 2, The Second Part. Hill also made a brief cameo appearance in the music video for the band Vampire Weekend. In the fall, it was announced that Jonah had declined to play the villain in the upcoming Matt Reeves film The Batman. It is unknown why the deal with Hill fell through, but the main reason cited for his departure from the project is financial disagreements with Warner Brothers studio executives. It is rumored that the actor requested a fee of $10 million, which is twice the salary of Robert Pattinson, who portrayed Batman. However, the star joined the team working on Clint Eastwood's biographical film, Richard Jewell, as one of the producers. Additionally, he directed a four-episode project for Instagram. The series, titled Unfiltered, explores the issues of cyber bullying on social media. In 2020, Hill appeared in a Coca-Cola Energy advertisement alongside director Martin Scorsese. The commercial aired during the Super Bowl. He also starred in a new advertising campaign for Adidas, which was based on his own script. Furthermore, he made a guest appearance on the sitcom Curb Your Enthusiasm and served as one of the executive producers of the documentary musical film Beastie Boys Story. Meanwhile, the star has earned the status of Hollywood's foremost profanity user. Out of every thousand words he utters, 23 do not pass censorship. Touched by such recognition, Jonah Hill published a grateful post on Instagram, making sure to mention Martin Scorsese separately, without whom such a significant achievement would have been impossible. In October, after parting ways with his girlfriend Gianna Santos, he became single once again. Following the breakup, he started spending more time with family and friends. However, it wasn't long before he began dating a new girlfriend, surfer Sarah Brady. In 2021, the film Don't Look Up had its premiere. In this satirical movie about the impending end of the world, Jonah played the president's son and, along with the entire cast, was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award. Hey, peeps. Uh, it's not looking like it's going to happen tonight, and I feel horrible, so we're going to put you up in a hotel somewhere. Excuse me, does, does the president know why we're here? The following year, he produced the documentary film This Place Rules and directed an episode of the sports series Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. He also directed a documentary about his psychotherapist titled Stutz. 
During that time, he revealed that he suffers from anxiety attacks, which led him to withdraw from promotional events for his projects and delete his Instagram account. In the fall of 2022, paparazzi spotted the actor with his new girlfriend who turned out to be Olivia Miller, the co-owner of a vintage online store. The couple did not comment on their relationship and did not appear at social events. However, in the spring of this year, an engagement ring was noticed on the girlfriend's hand and her rounded belly couldn't be concealed even by loose clothing. Their first child was born either in May or June, but Hill was unable to fully enjoy the joyful event due to accusations from his ex-partner. Sarah Brady accused Hill of emotional abuse and misogynistic narcissism. She shared screenshots of their conversations where he forbade her from surfing in a bikini, interacting with other men, and spending time with friends he didn't approve of. Soon, another woman came forward against Hill. Actress Alexa Nicholas stated that the actor kissed her without her consent when she was 16 years old. Hill's lawyers dismissed these accusations as fabrications, but they remained silent on Sarah's claims. Meanwhile, the romantic comedy film You People was released, in which Hill was a screenwriter, producer, and the film's main protagonist. First of all, can you please stop saying I get it and using air quotes? And second of all, when someone says I'm cool, I get it, they never are cool and they never get it. You shouldn't have to say that. That's not true. Currently, preparations are underway for the production of his new original film, Outcome, in which Keanu Reeves will play the lead role. Previously, there were reports of plans to collaborate with Martin Scorsese on a biographical film about the rock band Grateful Dead. Additionally, the actor will lend his voice to a character in a yet untitled animated film. Hill is a devoted sports fan, particularly of the basketball team, the Los Angeles Lakers. He can often be seen as a supporter at games of his favorite club. On the third anniversary of the death of legendary Kobe Bryant, Jonah left a heartfelt message in which he mentioned that he and his brother grew up idolizing the Lakers and their fondest memory is meeting their idol and beloved team. You know, I mean, it's incredible. It's like my dream. Hill considers Bill Murray and Dustin Hoffman to be his other idols. His top five favorite movies include Rushmore, The Big Lebowski, Boogie Nights, Back to the Future, and Goodfellas. He also enjoys watching Woody Allen films and considers Martin Scorsese his favorite director, to the point where he would even paint Scorsese's house if asked. As a music enthusiast, Jonah has a preference for hip-hop, rock, classical music, and avant-garde. Specifically, he enjoys artists like Jay-Z, Neil Young, Mozart, and Philip Glass. The star's net worth is estimated at $70 million. His substantial wealth allows him to have an impressive real estate portfolio. In 2010, Jonah purchased a house in Los Angeles for just under $2 million. The single-story structure perfectly combines classic and modern design. The 3,600-square-foot home features an open floor plan. Each room has sliding doors that lead to a backyard with a pool, garden, relaxation area, and a basketball court. The interior of the house predominantly features a simple color palette. Every wall, both inside and outside, is white, including the ceilings with large skylight windows. Inside, there is a kitchen with light cabinets and a marble countertop, a formal dining area that transitions into a spacious living room with a marble fireplace in the center, a home theater with multi-level leather seats, three bedrooms, and three and a half bathrooms. An additional bedroom is located in the guest house, which also houses a yoga studio. In 2015, Hill sold this property for $3.65 million. In 2016, the celebrity acquired a loft in the NoHo neighborhood of Manhattan for $9.2 million. The apartment, originally built with four bedrooms, underwent a transformation and now it features three spacious bedrooms. The bathroom is filled with natural light from two large windows. The apartment is equipped with cutting-edge smart home technology. The living room boasts a large, custom-made projector and screen for a theater-like experience. Adjacent to the living room is a kitchen with marble countertops and a stone island. The building's amenities include a 24-hour concierge service, a rooftop terrace, and other conveniences for residents. In March of 2022, Jonah listed his loft for sale at $11 million. A few months later, it was purchased for $10.6 million. In September 2019, he purchased a house in Santa Monica, California for $6.8 million. The mansion spans approximately 3,200 square feet and features four bedrooms, three bathrooms, a kitchen with white cabinets, and a massive brick pizza oven, as well as a breakfast nook that transitions into a dining area with glass doors leading to an inner courtyard, where there is an outdoor dining area. The centerpiece of the living room is a wood-burning fireplace, built-in bookshelves, and pendant lighting. The backyard hides a guest house with one bedroom and a fireplace, as well as a relaxation area and a pool. 
It is known that the actor sold this house in October of 2021 for $7.2 million. Slightly earlier in the same year, he paid $9 million for a mansion in a gated community in Malibu. The initially white building with a total area of approximately 3,600 square feet was painted black. The house is hidden behind a hedge and features a gated courtyard with an attached two-car garage. On the first floor, there is an open kitchen dining area that flows into a living room with a fireplace, numerous windows, and glass doors leading to the backyard where a summer kitchen, pool, spa area, and sauna are located. The second floor accommodates two bedrooms with the master bedroom boasting its own terrace, fireplace, and bathroom. On the upper level, there is a large terrace offering breathtaking ocean views. Hill sold this house in December 2022 for $11.1 million after listing it for sale in June of the same year for $15 million. In June 2022, he also paid $15.5 million for another house in Malibu. This property has a total area of 3,100 square feet. Built in the 1930s, the house showcases a traditional style and features four bedrooms and an equal number of bathrooms. It includes a kitchen, a living room with a fireplace, and a vaulted ceiling with wooden beams. The living room transitions through wide arched doorways into a dining room and a family room. Adjacent to the house, there is an inner courtyard with a covered dining area near the ocean. Hill owns several expensive cars, including a Porsche 911, but he can mostly be seen driving an Audi. He has been spotted driving one car of the German brand model SQ5 at a gas station in Beverly Hills, while another was caught up in an accident in downtown Los Angeles. In addition to these cars, he is also rumored to have an Audi A8, Mercedes E-Class, Volvo XC60, and Range Rover Sports. Jonah refers to himself as a good Jewish boy and states that he is quite successful in acting, but he doesn't know how to be a celebrity. The actor rarely gives interviews and has a controversial reputation in the professional industry. He has been called arrogant and the scandal with his ex-girlfriend could potentially cause significant damage to his career. What's your favorite Jonah Hill movie? Gang, obviously everything we talked about in here, super classified, right? If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.